The movie begins somewhere in the desert of Namibia, following an old railway line. The queen and her family are enjoying a leisurely train ride through vast golden sands. Their train carriage holds an exquisite crown, leading the queen to instruct her security to draw the curtains. They assure her that they're in the middle of the desert with no one in sight. However, the queen insists on keeping the crown hidden from view, even from above the sky. This is where we meet Mr. A, who makes a grand entrance by skydiving above the desert. His drop zone, the train carrying the queen and her crown. Meanwhile, the queen plays a game of hide-and-seek with her grandchildren. Her security personnel allow her to enter the main carriage, where the magnificent tiara is kept. To their surprise, the queen tries to re-enter the carriage soon after, still playing the game. It's then that the guards realize that the person they initially let in was actually someone else disguised as the queen. They quickly rush into the carriage, only to discover the crown replaced with the initial A. In the meantime, Mr. A sheds his disguise above the train and prepares to flee. The guards suddenly confront him, but he effortlessly dodges every one of their bullets. Mr. A uses his exceptional combat skills to fend them off until the last guard hooks him to the train with an arrow. With his advanced gear, Mr. A leaps from the train and uses the hook to glide through the sand. The guard fires at him, but he dodges the bullets and surprises his assailant by getting back on the train. Mr. A then overpowers him and kicks him from the railway before making a dramatic getaway. The scene then shifts to a group of local drug dealers waiting for their fresh supply. Here we meet Ali, who arrives with a briefcase full of drugs. His nervous attitude initially raises suspicions among the dealers, but they ultimately let him leave. However, as Ali is about to leave, he accidentally drops his ID card. One dealer checks out the ID, while another discovers a transmitter hidden in their drug shipment. This exposes Ali's cover, and the dealers discover his true identity as an undercover police officer. He's threatened at gunpoint, until a sudden arrival interrupts their standoff. Here, we meet Ali's superior, Officer J, who swiftly arrives and arrests the drug dealers. Afterward, we're introduced to Officer Sonali, who also happens to be Jay's former classmate. She's assigned to investigate Mr. A's case and presents her detailed findings during a briefing. Sonali reveals Mr. A to be a highly intelligent thief known for stealing rare artifacts from various corners of the world. His notable robberies include the latest jewel from London, a priceless painting from Paris, and a necklace from Istanbul. Sonali explains that Mr. A is not only a master thief, but also a skilled artist who crafts his disguises before each heist. She also highlights his habit of leaving a distinctive mark of the initial A at the scene of every theft. Upon hearing this, Officer J identifies the pattern of Mr. A's robberies and briefs his team accordingly. J is now armed with detailed information and a capable team, and he's determined to capture the mysterious thief at any cost. Meanwhile, Mr. A designs several gadgets for his upcoming heist. The scene then shifts to the day Mr. A is likely to play out his next heist. Jay speculates that the thief will possibly target one of two museums holding priceless diamonds and ancient necklaces. He then directs security to tightly seal both areas, leaving no chance for the thief to escape. Meanwhile, Mr. A dives into a canal and cuts through the bathroom floor of the museum. Undetected, he gains access and covers himself completely in white paint. By the time the police arrive, Mr. A disguises himself as a marble statue and seamlessly blends into the exhibit. Following this, Mr. A blends in among the statues and brings out a remote-controlled car he designed. He uses a live feed from the car's camera to stealthily guide it through the museum. The car then makes it to the main safe and successfully steals the diamond. Next, Mr. A uses his pre-installed projector to create the illusion that the diamond is still secure. He then patiently waits for the right moment to make his escape from the scene. Elsewhere, Jay anxiously awaits Mr. A's move at the jewelry exhibition in the museum. He discovers that the museum's most valuable necklace is faulty from the beginning. Knowing Mr. A's preference for flawless items, Jay realizes Mr. A's true target is the diamond in the other museum. 
Jay immediately dispatches police reinforcements to that location and calls Ali to remain on high alert. While on the phone, Ali accidentally bumps into an elderly man and apologizes. This old man turns out to be none other than Mr. A in his clever disguise. Jay overhears their conversation and quickly asks Ali to arrest the man. It's revealed that all the museum staff had been granted leave that particular day. While on the phone, Ali stops the old man to check his ID, and the man hands him a card. Ali remains puzzled, as there's no name on the front. The old man calmly states that his name is on the back of the card. Ali flips it over, and, to his shock, sees Mr. A's signature. Before the police can react, Mr. A swiftly escapes through a manhole right beneath him and disappears before their eyes. Jay and Ali try their best to capture him, but Mr. A escapes through his cunning tactics yet again. Following this, Mr. A appears at the airport in yet another disguise. The media reports his next target, a priceless 600-year-old sword. The next day, Jay and his team arrive at the palace and heavily guard the area. Mr. A finds an alternate route inside, but encounters another thief trying to steal the sword. He warns the thief not to touch it and reveals that the sword is surrounded by invisible lasers. These lasers will trigger alarms and give out electric shocks through holes in the walls upon contact. In a bold move, Mr. A tosses a coin towards the laser, which immediately sets off the alarm. The nearby guards rush into the area just as the electric shocks activate and incapacitate them. The other thief takes the opportunity to flee with the sword and leaves behind Mr. A's signature. Enraged, Mr. A pursues the thief, but Sonali intervenes and holds the imposter at gunpoint. Mr. A arrives just in time to disarm Sonali and then rescues the imposter from being caught. Sonali and Jay are left frustrated as Mr. A slips through their fingers once again. Once they reach their exit route, the other thief removes the mask and reveals herself as a young woman named Suneri. It turns out that Suneri is a fan of Mr. A and attempted to steal the sword in hopes of meeting him. She tries to persuade Mr. A to form an alliance and work together. However, he turns her down and leaves with the priceless sword. After their meeting, Mr. A begins to observe Suneri closely and approaches her in disguise. He gets impressed by her determination and finally agrees to take her on as his partner. A few days later, Suneri arrives at a movie theater to meet Jay. It's revealed that Suneri has been working undercover for the police from the beginning. She was caught during a robbery, but Jay let her go when she promised to help him catch Mr. A. Shortly after, Mr. A arrives at the theater in another disguise to meet Suneri. He provides her with a passport and tickets for a trip to Rio, where they will carry out their next heist. Jay, hiding in the shadows, overhears their entire conversation, while Mr. A remains unaware of his presence. Following this, Mr. A and Suneri arrive in Rio, where Jay and Ali also end up according to the plan. It's revealed that the police officers will be staying with Sonali's twin sister, Monali, who lives there. Meanwhile, Mr. A begins to trust Suneri, and she reciprocates his trust. He finally meets her without any disguise and reveals his name, Arian. He then asks Suneri if she trusts him, and she wholeheartedly confirms that she does. Shockingly, Arian challenges her to jump off a cliff, and she agrees without hesitation. He follows her with a cable attached to himself for their safety. It turns out that this was just a test of Suneri's trustworthiness, and she earns even more of Arian's trust through her willingness to take the leap. The next day, Arian goes for a walk in disguise and unexpectedly runs into Jay. Although they're strangers, they eventually strike up a conversation upon discovering they're both Indian. Both men fabricate stories about themselves. Jay pretends to be a writer, while Arian claims he collects coins for a living. Just then, Suneri calls Arian and informs him she'll be away for a few hours. She then reaches out to Jay and arranges to meet at their location. Suneri later reveals to Jay that she's gained enough of Arian's trust to see his true identity. Jay reminds her that he's relying on her, and she assures him that she will help him catch Arian. Later, Arian takes Suneri to a museum to finalize their next plan. He then reveals their target for the upcoming heist. 
a collection of ancient coins worth approximately 150 crores. After sorting out their strategy, Sunheri heads off to a party where she discreetly meets Jay. She then discloses the details of Arian's upcoming plan. Jay then gives her a device with which she can alert the police when activated and instructs her to use it once they're inside the museum. Little do they know, Arian is observing them at the same event, though completely disguised. It becomes clear to Arian that Suneri and Jay have been working together all along. He feels deeply disappointed after discovering the truth, as he genuinely had feelings for Suneri. The next evening, Suneri appears visibly anxious whenever she's around Arian. He suddenly asks her how she would feel if he were to die the next day. Arian then confesses to feeling nervous about their upcoming robbery, a feeling he has never experienced before. His words are somewhat vague, leaving Suneri with a sense that he knows more than he's letting on. Following this, Arian and Suneri head out to a party where Jay is also present. Arian appears without his usual disguise and eventually meets Jay face to face. They finally acknowledge each other's true identities. Arian as Mr. A, and Jay as the police officer pursuing him. However, Jay doesn't immediately arrest Arian, as he plans to wait and capture him in the act instead. The next morning, Arian confronts Suneri and demands that she confess the truth. She admits to collaborating with Jay, but pleads with Arian to trust her. In response, he challenges her to a risky game of Russian roulette. Suneri nervously agrees determined to regain his trust. They take turns pulling the trigger on each other until only one bullet remains. The gun ends up in Suneri's hands, leaving Arian to face the final moment of truth. She tearfully confesses that she deceived him and accepts that she deserves punishment. Suneri then confesses her love for him and quickly pulls the trigger on herself. In a shocking twist, the revolver clicks empty. Arian had never loaded it with a bullet in the first place. Arian realizes her sincerity, and they share a passionate kiss. Following this, Ali and Jay guard a collection of coins at the museum. Arian and Suneri cleverly infiltrate the crowd in disguise as dwarves. Arian then releases spiders among the children in the museum. The chaos and panic allows them to steal the coins without detection. Immediately after, Jay hurries to the apartment where Arian had been staying, only to find it empty. He then receives a call from Suneri, who reveals that she has chosen to stand by Arian. The police quickly launch a search operation to arrest them. Soon after, Ali and Jay spot the cunning thieves fleeing on a motorcycle. A high-speed chase ensues, leading Arian and Suneri splitting up to avoiding being captured. Jay eventually catches up to Arian, who refuses to surrender in spite of a fierce struggle. In the midst of their confrontation, Ali arrives on the scene, aiming his gun at Suneri. Arian finds himself in a desperate situation, torn between avoiding arrest and the safety of Suneri, whom he loves. Arian suddenly poses a question to Ali and Jay, asking if anyone has ever loved someone enough to kill them. His words confuse Ali and Jay, but soon Harry understands his cue immediately. She unexpectedly opens fire on Arian, causing him to fall from the cliff to his death. Jay then decides to spare soon Harry from imprisonment. He coldly remarks that her punishment is to live with the guilt of murdering her beloved. The scene then cuts to six months later. Suneri is now managing a small restaurant, happy with her life, and no longer involved in criminal acts. Moments later, we find Arian at the same restaurant, and the two seem to be still deeply in love. It turns out that he had staged his death during the confrontation with Jay and Ali. In fact, Arian and Suneri had planned to fake his death to leave behind their life of crime and start fresh as ordinary civilians. Afterward, Officer Jay arrives at the restaurant to confront the two. He likely knew Arian was alive, but allowed him to disappear just to arrest him later as a surprise. Arian then explains that he has genuinely changed his ways and is dedicated to living a peaceful life with Suneri. He willingly hands over all evidence that could incriminate him to Jay. Upon hearing this, Jay is left impressed by Arian's transformation and honesty. He decides not to arrest him and gives them the chance to embrace their new life away from crime. 
Jay accepts the evidence and offers his blessings for their happiness and future. The movie comes to an end as Jay leaves the restaurant, content that Arian and Suneri are finally free from the shadows of their past.